Would you believe that this massive building complex is meant to be a giant battery? The EVX is a project between the company EnergyVault and the Chinese government. It's the world's first gravity energy storage system, or GESS, built to store and release energy from the nearby wind farm. Gravity storage facilities are set to turn the world of energy storage upside down and provide a genuine alternative to the likes of Tesla's overly complicated lithium-ion megapack battery facilities. Not to mention the controversy surrounding the mining of lithium and rare earth minerals needed for this tech. Built in the province of Rudong, the EVX, the over 120-metre high facility, houses several blocks made of soil, sand or recycled waste, each weighing 24 tonnes and around 12 cubic metres. The entire building is automated. Hooked up to the power grid, an AI program reacts according to the power requirements of the moment, moving the blocks up and down using specialised lifts to store and release power as needed. The entire structure is capable of channeling 100 megawatts per hour, with a peak power output of 25 megawatts. With its round-trip efficiency projected to be over 80% and an estimated 35-year operating life, it promises the power capacity and consistency needed to support China's extensive electrical grid. The project is a response to a growing problem. As the world pivots as fast as it can, towards using renewable energy. What will happen when the sun isn't up, when the wind isn't blowing? With our power dependent on the whims of nature, will we just lose electricity when the conditions aren't optimal? Even managing power demand at peak times is likely to become a big issue. The increasing demand for EVs is threatening to put a heavy burden onto the grid. So much so, in fact, that companies are already looking to incentivize or automate for off-peak charging. The AI boom looms heavy over the grid as well, promising even more stress on the grid with the amount of power they need. Just as the world rushes towards renewable energy sources, there's also a rush to find the energy storage capacity to keep electric output consistent, even if the sources are inconsistent. In short, we need batteries big enough to power entire cities for hours at a time. Enter the gravity battery. High school science class teaches us that still objects hold potential energy. Pushing the objects into motion transforms that energy into kinetic energy. This entire principle is what powers a gravity battery. The system can consist of multiple weights or a single huge one. When there is a surplus of electricity being generated by wind turbines and solar panels, a motor pulls the weight up. To lift an object, you need enough force to counter the gravity pushing it down over the height that the object needs to rise. That force multiplied by the distance traveled is work, or energy, invested in the object as gravitational potential energy. This stored energy is so handy because it doesn't degrade over time. A falling object still falls with the same energy it took to lift it. This makes it the perfect long-term energy storage. This is how gravity batteries release electricity. During times of high demand, the weight falls, turning the motor into a generator. The movement turns potential energy into kinetic energy, which then turns into electricity. It's the same principle behind pump hydroelectric storage facilities. Pump storage is a technology that's been around for over a century now. Its history can be traced back to Italy and Switzerland in the 1890s, where the concept was first researched and applied. However, it wasn't until 1907 that the first pump storage facility was built, the Engerweyer near Schaffhausen, Switzerland. This seemingly humble pond is still operating to this day, and with its refurbishment back in the early 1990s, is scheduled to keep operating until at least 2052. This just shows the power, resilience and reliability of the pumped hydroelectric storage method. It requires an elevated body of water connected to a lower elevation reserve, with the main facility connecting them both. The elevated body of water is dammed up, waiting for the moment more electricity is needed. When electricity is in high demand, the water is allowed to flow through turbines hooked up to the electric grid, turning the entire facility into one giant generator. Once there is less demand for electricity, and during a period of lower electricity costs, the pump storage facility takes electricity from the grid instead, 
This powers the turbines to spin, drawing water back up from the lower reservoir to the more elevated one, storing up water and energy once again. The only energy loss concerns with pumped hydroelectric storage comes from water evaporating from the reserve. The pumps or turbines are generally 90% efficient. So, as a whole, pump storage operates very efficiently, with only minor costs incurred by the whole cyclical process. The difference between pump storage and gravity batteries is that gravity batteries are marginally more accessible. Pump storage facilities require large elevated bodies of water and a reservoir at the bottom. Not every city or even country has access to a landform as specific as that. Meanwhile, gravity batteries can be constructed wherever there's enough elevation for the weights to rise and fall. Structures could be custom-made and built from the ground up. Or they could be built into pre-built structures, both in use or no longer in use. As long as there's a skyscraper or other tall structure in the area, a gravity battery could be made. Small wonder China is investing so much money into its construction and development. Currently, there are about six EVX facilities planned for construction within the country, with capacities ranging from 100 megawatt hours to 660 megawatt hours. There are even plans for a facility capable of channeling two gigawatts per hour in Inner Mongolia. Combined, the plants cost over 1 billion USD in capital expenditure alone. To China, it's worth it. The facilities promise a long economic life and require huge amounts of local labor and locally sourced material to build. Said building material is also easy to find, compared to rare metals needed for, say, lithium-ion batteries. All of this combined lowers the facility's levelized cost of storage. The L cost includes not only the initial capital needed to build the facility, but also the costs of operation and maintenance. For example, pump hydro systems have an L cost of 17 cents kilowatt per hour. Meanwhile, lithium ion batteries can have an L cost of around 25 cents kilowatt per hour to 35 cents kilowatt per hour. Compare this to Gravity Vault's projected L cost for their models at below 5 cents per kilowatt hour. This makes it surprising and commendable, in a way, that China is one of the countries leading the charge on adopting gravity battery technology. By 2020, China owned roughly 72% of the lithium-ion battery market. From raw material extraction to the production of battery packs, they have it covered. Their efforts allow for a proof of concept that could give other countries confidence in the technology. This in turn would let other countries invest in energy storage in a seemingly simpler, more accessible way, without so much reliance on the Chinese supply chain. An example of this being the Scotland-based Gravitricity. While Energy Vault is focused on building upwards, Gravitricity is looking down. This company caught eyes in 2021 with its demonstration of its gravity energy storage technology. They constructed a 15-metre tall rig at the port of Leith, Edinburgh, then suspended two 25-ton weights on thick steel cables within. The 250-kilowatt rig was then connected to the grid. It was designed to test how the two weights could smoothen the energy output over long periods of time by dropping one after the other, helping the engineers refine the technology. After three months, the demonstration was deemed a success and served as proof of concepts for the parties with a growing interest in Gravitricity's projects. Now Gravitricity is collaborating with companies like ABB to bring that technology to abandoned mines. Its new system, called Gravistore, repurposes the mineshaft to contain their original structure, but on an even bigger scale. Bigger weights, stronger winches, greater power and capacity. The deepest mines in the world can extend up to more than three kilometers beneath the surface. Compare that to the Burj Khalifa, the tallest building in the world, at 828 meters. If the energy delivered by the storage facility equals the mass of the weight times the force of gravity times the height the weight travels, this means that underground Gravistore systems can store and deliver more energy compared to above-ground structures that are more limited in height. Its powerful winches are capable of dropping the weight slowly for longer duration power release, or drop it faster to deliver more power in a short amount of time. It also saves resources. Decommissioning mineshafts is very expensive and time-consuming. 
By repurposing them for energy storage, they can be used for a new function for up to 50 years past their original lifetime, mitigating the cost of decommissioning and creating new job opportunities. Never mind the time and materials needed to build a brand new structure for the gravity battery. Now Gravitricity is working with commercial partners all over Europe to further the development and implementation of their projects. One of their projects is focused on the remote town of Puhajarvi in central Finland. The town is right next to Europe's deepest zinc and copper mine, the Fuha Salmi mine, which goes as deep as 1,444 metres underground. As most of the mine is no longer in operation, it is the perfect place to start building a Gravistor facility. Gravitricity will be working with the local special development company Kalio Puhajarvi, whose goal is to promote regeneration projects at the mine and the surrounding area. A Gravistor facility will not only revitalize the mine, but help revitalize the town itself. And by tying into the local electricity grid, it can also help balance the Finnish electrical services. Of course, with technology this young, there are still downsides and limitations to its use. Part of the demand for energy storage solutions is the growing need for personal and home solutions. With the lowering cost of solar panels, generating electricity at home has become very accessible. So accessible, in fact, that, for example, Australian energy companies are now charging consumers when their solar panels generate more energy than they consume, which then flows back into the grid. The best way to avoid the sun tax would be home energy storage. Home lithium-ion batteries like Tesla's are used to store any surplus generated by private solar panels, letting people consume that charge when the sun isn't around. But they're costly and come with their own safety concerns. Having a more eco and geopolitically friendly alternative option would be welcome to most. Unfortunately, the physics involved with gravity batteries make them impractical for home use. In a recent study, Students from Purdue University of Mechanical Engineering tried to construct a gravity battery that spanned the height of a whole house, from the basement to the attic. Their experiment involved a concrete weight with a mass of about 2,000 kilograms and a truss to simultaneously fortify the house and act as an elevator shaft for the weight. In the end, the structure was only able to store the equivalent of 12 AA batteries worth of energy. Adding to the weight or increasing the height of the shaft would only increase the cost of the gravity battery, not including the maintenance costs. With an energy capacity that low and installation costs that high, it makes for an unreasonable economic investment for the individual household. However, not all is lost. There is already an established pipeline for geothermal power and heating systems. Fracking machines are used to drill incredibly deep holes where liquid is then stored. The liquid is naturally insulated by the ground, creating a higher or lower ambient base temperature to use in heating and cooling, which in turn reduces power consumption. Companies like ERDA in the UK are using this technology for supermarkets and housing estates, showing that hole boring like this can be achieved on a local level. Perhaps these can be used to bore a hole that's deep and wide enough to accommodate a gravity battery that can sustain a local neighbourhood. Even if the gravity battery is cheaper, because it takes time to build and its benefits are more long-term, the material and monetary investment is daunting. Compare this to lithium-ion batteries, the current standard for storing energy. The technology is reliable and well-established. They can also store more energy using relatively less space than gravity batteries can. They can be installed quickly without the large infrastructure changes needed by gravity batteries, providing more immediate and short-term utility. But we can't depend on lithium-ion batteries forever. Chemical degradation means their energy capacity lessens with time and use. They end up getting thrown away when they're no longer useful. Alongside the ecological impact of mining for lithium and certain production processes, this makes them terrible for the environment. And because the material to build them is limited, their price fluctuates based on geopolitical dynamics and availability of supply. With Trump's massive tariffs on Chinese goods, lithium-ion batteries just got more costly for US citizens. At the same time, the $500 billion investment into AI technology means the energy demand in the US will grow on an exponential level. 
More demand means more stress on the grid, which means an even greater need for energy storage options to stabilize everything. How will the US balance the now even more expensive lithium-ion batteries with their energy storage necessities? Perhaps gravity batteries will provide an answer. The science of gravity batteries is conceptually simple and versatile. As long as there is a vertical structure to support it, it could theoretically be built anywhere. However, constructing the structure requires massive monetary investment, big enough to make people balk. Humanity has been using gravity to store energy for over a century now. The only difference this time is that companies like Gravitricity and Energy Vault are seeking to store the energy using weights instead of water. And with the rapid pivot to renewable energy, we need massive, stable methods of storing and releasing electricity as soon as possible. Gravity batteries might be the best solution we have. But the proof of its effectivity can only come over time. The question becomes, is it worth the risk? Remember to hit the subscribe button and ring that bell to stay updated with our latest content. And while you're here, why not check out another one of our exciting videos? Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.